Hi, I'm Katie, and this is a short tutorial on wet blocking your cross stitch using a small finish for demonstration. This is my finish of Stacy Nash's Jack's House. I've just finished stitching it, and as you can see, this has some distortion. I like to roll, roll my fabric up when I'm stitching. I stitch in hand, so it's got just some things that need to come out and wet blocking is the most effective way to smooth out your finish remove distortion particularly around block stitching as i hope you can see around the house there's some skew there and it's also not lying flat because that's well that's what distortion looks like and wet blocking is the best way to remove it one important thing to know about wet blocking before we get into the actual details is that it can only be done on color stable materials if you are using over dyed floss for example you cannot wet block your finishes it can be possible to wet block with um, color stable threads on an over dyed linen i have done that before you need to test your fabric that means wet down a little scrap of it to make sure it's not running before you go ahead and do this so this is my finish of peppermint pals which is stitched on fox and rabbit 40 count ocean air it has been blocked so you can tell by just seeing how perfectly square and even that weave in weave is even though this had a ton of block stitching and quite heavy distortion. So this was able to survive wet blocking, but if you're using an over dyed linen, just take a little bit of it in the margins or a scrap piece of linen, wet it down, and then pat it with some muslin or a paper towel to make sure that the color is not coming loose. Of course, all threads or linen, even if they've been properly mordanted and are color stable, like Overa Soie threads, which are what I used on Jack House, can sometimes fail. If you wet your piece down and you find that a color is running, this is what you do. Take your fabric to the sink, we'll take your piece to the sink, and run cold water through it until the water runs clear. Don't soak it, that'll just trap the dye in your piece. The cold water going through it will clean it out and so then once you've done that, let it dry and then you'll be able to wet block your piece. So I have done a previous more involved tutorial on blocking for the Simple Harmony box. I'll link that here. That's for quite large or involved finishes, but I do really recommend wet blocking even just for small pieces like this. You might think you could iron it, but it's going to look a lot better, particularly here. That house is gonna square out all nicely with wet blocking. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. In the Simple Harmony tutorial, I used a large blocking board that I had made for the purpose, but you can also buy knitter's blocking boards. This is what I have here, and the ones I bought, you can just click together in the sizes that you need. So I blocked the Verlanda sampler on four of these put together, but just for a small piece like Jack's house, I just need one. So what you need for wet blocking is a little spray mister filled with cold water, your piece, a blocking board, whether that's one you made yourself as outlined in the Simple Harmony tutorial, or a knitter's blocking board, I got this on Amazon, and then some stainless steel pins. These are from Access Commodities. You can get them from Needle in a Haystack, which is where I got mine. It's very important that your pins be stainless steel. They need to be able to survive contact with water without rusting. That would be really, really bad. But let's get to the blocking. So the first thing to do is just to wet your piece down and use the most water where you see the most distortion. So lay your piece flat on a table and see where is it not lying nicely. So I'm going to, just for the purposes of demonstration, really wet this thing down. There wasn't much distortion in this, so it doesn't need a blocking job this intense, but if you had 
a lot of distortion, then this is how much you put it down. One problem with the knitters blocking boards is that these lines are not very dark or very thick. They can be difficult to see. So under a wet light fabric, that's actually fine. But on something like Druid Blue used for my Cardinal Kin Kit, you would have some problems with that. And so I recommend a different setup for that. And you might be able to notice the water has caused this piece to seize. So wetting it kind of contracts the linen and then it's going to relax as it dries, which means you're going to need to come back and revisit your blocking work later. And I'll cover that in the tutorial as well. So when I'm just doing a small piece like this, I line up something that has a strong line so that's going to be my bottom corner of the house against the grid and that's where i start so i have lined up this bottom corner of the house meeting it with that on the grid and i'm going to start pinning from there and what i do as i pin is I try and smooth this out. So you want to get everything square. You can rely on your lines. You want to look carefully at your weave of your linen and see that it's lining up with these lines. You want to get everything square, but you also need to look at your elements. Are they square and lined up? So. My house was kind of skewed. It was a little on the diagonal. That was where I saw the most distortion. And so that's where I'm going to start and focus my efforts because that was the biggest problem that needed to be addressed in blocking. So I take my fingers and I just smooth everything out and then pin at regular intervals. You will pin more aggressively depending on how much distortion you have and how much you need to stretch and pull out. So part of what you're doing here is you are pulling out your distortion. That's what you want to achieve as you're smoothing. You may also notice if you've seen my previous blocking tutorial, that I am working with the piece face up. This is normal unless you're gluing. The Simple Harmony box was kind of an aberration because you were going to apply your glued backing paper to the piece while it was still tensioned out from the blocking. So that was done face down. Normally I block face up so that I can clearly see everything. And it is also quite normal to need to just kind of revisit your pinning as you work. So. You'll notice me frequently adjusting my pins as I go ahead and smooth this out. I want the bottom of the house to line up as much as possible with this bottom line. So I'm smoothing, I'm pinning, And I can't encourage you enough to do this, even for small finishes, just because it's amazing. It'll take out everything. It'll take out fold lines. It'll take out, you know, that crunching that I had from how my I roll my fabric when working. And now so that I get this properly smoothed out, I'm running my hand along it to pull this out and then I'm putting a pin in top center and this will help me. And then as you can probably see, I just kind of move, like I rotate the blocking board as I work so that I can more clearly see what I'm doing, especially with under a camera where I don't wanna stick my head under the frame and obscure your view. The top had much less distortion. You tend to see it around big blocks of stitching. So if you have done some dang grass, for example, that's gonna need some serious blocking. So up here, there's just not as much. So I'm just kind of making sure everything's smooth and lightly putting it in place. This is gonna be pretty easy. So just use your hand 
Just smooth it out and pin in place at regular intervals. You can follow the grid to place your pins. This is not an advanced blocking job, so I'm just kind of sticking them in wherever. So that's the first pass at Jack's house. And if you can see, that linen now looks much more square and it's also now lying perfectly flat and even. I'm now going to let this dry for about an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Exactly how long you need to give it depends on how wet you got your piece and how big it is. But basically when we come back, we're going to see that the fabric as it's drying has relaxed a little bit and I need to revisit my pinning. So I'll come back and show you that stage. Okay, so I've let this dry a while. It's now lightly damp, but it's not fully dry, which is the point when you want to readjust your blocking gel. So this actually didn't, it turns out, loosen very much, but I think you should just be able to see that there is just a little bit of warping in here that I want to pull out before this dries so that it lies perfectly smooth, flat, and even when it is dry. And the way that I do that is that I just readjust my pins and I either pull them up on a timer, here I'm pulling up several, and then just kind of smooth out and pin back into place so that everything goes back to that perfectly smooth, glossy finish that we would like to see from this. So I'm just going to essentially go back over my work, smooth and pin back into place, just kind of taking out anything where I find it, where the fabric isn't perfectly smooth. And here that's mostly on this side. So as before, I'm just going to run my hand along this to smooth this down and then pin it back into place. And as before, you do want to keep an eye on the weave, make sure that everything is super straight. If you did a good job in your first go around on the blocking, you shouldn't really need it to be straightening, any, straightening anything, just making sure that everything at this point is fully taut and lines smooth. But if you notice a place where it's not quite even or straight. You can also adjust it at this point too. And if you need to, you can always go in and wet it again and just adjust anything that needs adjusting on some large pieces where there was more desertion. I have actually gone through and done a full blocking job twice. So I'm now going to let this fully dry and then come back and show you what it looks like. I'm back again, Jack's house is now dry. I have removed the pins, taken it from the blocking board, and I just wanted to show you the difference, the before and after. Look at how perfectly glassy smooth, even, and squared up that is. It's now ready for finishing. I am going to apply my interfacing to this and then make it into my pillow finish. But this is all the magic of just a little water and some pins. It's very easy to do and I can't recommend blocking your finishes highly enough. If you are doing a more complicated, larger piece like a sampler or something large, you may also want to refer to the linked tutorial from the Simple Harmony series number eight on wet blocking the larger pieces from that block, which would be, from that box, which would be easy, 
equally applicable to a large piece like a sampler. But for just a smaller, medium-sized piece, really, really super simple and just absolutely beautiful results. Look at how perfectly flat that is lying on the table and that's just the result of what we did here today. So until I see you again, happy stitching.